Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and as you can see, we have a special guest. We're at the Fly Fishing Show in Denver. Devin Olson is joining us once again. Devin, welcome back. Thanks, Tim. You're welcome. So, what's our topic this time? Fly design. So, how does your, the design of your nymph affect your sink rate and how can then build that into your system so that you can manipulate your sink rate and where you're getting in the column a little bit in finer detail. Ooh, I like this. And, and I, I know ahead of time, Devin has four categories he's gonna share with all of us. His four categories of flies, and it's gonna directly relate back to all of this. Stay tuned. All right, let's just jump right into this. What are one of your categories? Paragons. This is a pretty well-known one at this point. Um, back when I first started tying these and sharing them back in 2016, I think, yeah. there weren't a lot of people tying paradigons, at least in the United States. But paradigons are a smooth-bodied fly covered in resin. And if you translate from uh, paradigon from Spanish to English, it means pellet. And so it sinks like a pellet. If you want the fastest sinking nymph at the any you know weight that you choose, a paradigon would be your fastest sinking nymph you can get. Ooh, I love it. And my connection to the Paragon, this is uh, you know product placement right here. I wrote a book in the summer of 2021 called Fly Tying for Everyone. My publisher, Jay Nichols, said basically, use whatever flies you want. But he had one requirement. I had to have one fly, the Paragon. Man, they work so well. They, they work do. so well. And uh, especially if you need to get a small fly down in some pretty heavy water, they're probably your best choice. I love it. So category number one, Paragons. Just really kind of you know, dubbing, nothing crazy, anything mm -hmm. like that. Smooth body fly. Smooth body. All right, pull. Let's keep going. Number two. Number two would be flies that have a little bit of dubbing or some fibers from feathers on them. So examples would be a waltz worm, a pheasant tail, maybe a mayfly nymph that has a little bit of a dubbing thorax to it. Just something that slows your sink rate down. So the, the paradigon, it's encased in resin, right? But if you add dubbing, if you add fe uh, feathers to your fly, those little fibers... They catch water as they sink, and they're like little mini parachutes that slow down the sink rate of your fly as it drops. That might sound like a bad thing, but can actually be a very good thing to not have your fly fall as fast because we want that fly to come level or just above the fish when it gets to them. And if you have a fly that sinks too fast at a certain weight, you can decrease that sink rate and get more on the level of the fish by adding a little bit of drag to the body of the fly by having a material that doesn't sink quite as fast. So dubbing, feathers, that's the second category. All right, number two. Now, I'm a fly tire. You know this. I had a fly tying demo today. Whenever I dub the thorax, we'll say on something like a sneak attack fly. It's a paragon body, a little bit of dubbing. It's a thorax. I tend to trim my thorax away. I, I don't know. I like a clean thorax. Let's go to Devin Olson. You're preparing for a competition. Do you do any touch-up, or is it just dub, whip finish, and you move on? I dub. I might brush, and then I trim the length usually after I brush. And what's the length? Is there, is there a preferential size? Um, if it were to fold back... I wouldn't want it any longer than the length of the hook shank. But if it's a mayfly style fly like that, I'm probably going to have it shorter to look more like just kind of short legs. Okay. Because I have a, another category specifically for the next one. Oh, what category? Is, is that number three? That's number three. Let's keep going. We got this going. Here we go. <laughs> so number three is just soft tackles. <laughs> if you take the, the flies that we already talked about, you could put them on a, a paragon, but normally I'm going to put it on a fly that already has some dubbing or uh, feathers. And if you add a soft tackle to it, you could, it could be hen hackle, it could be CDC, just some sort of collared soft tackle. That's gonna add some more drag yet again. So um, that same fly that you fished that was a little bit slower or, or a little bit faster sinking, add a soft tackle to it and now it sinks even more slowly. I'll give one example of why that's so important. I had a tournament this last fall. I was fishing uh, a floated European nymph leader up into a pool. And I had a two millimeter waltz worm. I could actually see, the water was so clear, I could watch it fall through the water. And I was getting a lot of fish to eat, but I was watching it fall and it looked just a little bit too fast to me. And I put the same fly on with the CDC soft tackle on it. And I ended up getting about twice as many fish out of that pool on that fly than I had on the other one. And it wasn't because of, I, I think the soft tackle changed anything about the appeal to the fish other than it just fell through the column slower. I'm hearing a lot of different things. I mean, we're hearing these incremental changes that could definitely have an impact. Uh, the other aspect I'm going to pull into this is the notion of soft tackle. I love soft tackles. I mean, I love to tie with grouse. I love to tie with partridge. Recently, in the last five years especially, I've transitioned to a lot of CDC. 
Uh, a lot of people think CDC, it's expensive and it's made to float flies, but it's got great movement in the water as well. Any particular soft tackle fibers you prefer? I use CDC probably most often, unless I'm specifically gonna swing the fly. Um, CDC tends to fold in and just collapse if it's swung. So if it's a fly that's made to be swung, then I'll use some sort of other hen or grouse. Okay, all right, sounds good. We got three categories down. I wonder what category four is. I already know. All right, what's the last <laughs> category, Devin? The last category is just flies that sink the slowest. So for me, that's flies with a ton of rubber legs and the mop. The mop, if you look at the body on that fly, it's just nothing but interstitial spaces. Same thing if you had a stone fly that's got some chenille on it, but also has a whole bunch of rubber legs on it. A lot of people tie stone flies um, because they can put a lot of weight on it. And so if they need to get down, they do that with the stone fly. But actually, because it's got all those appendages on it, it's going to sink slower than if it didn't. So think about that as you uh, factor the amount of weight that you need into those flies because they are going to sink a lot slower than other flies that be tied with other, other materials but have the same weight. Uh, mop flies, do you put any dubbing on it or is it just straight mop? I usually have a little collar dubbing, mainly just to clean it up. Okay. But it, I don't think it makes a difference on how it fishes. No, I don't either. I tie with a little bit. I don't. I, I think you have to dress it up. You have to make it a little classy. Like class up our mop flies, yeah, everybody. The, the only thing, time I think it might make a difference is if you put a hotspot color dubbing or something okay. like that on it. Something that really differentiates it. But if you're just putting some hairs here on there or something to cover your thread wraps at the end, it, they're seeing the mop. They're not seeing the Absolutely, dubbing. absolutely. Hey, quick time out though. Um, just as an FYI, we, this is now Devin's second video, actually third I think he's done on my channel. Go back to the second one. There's a button right now. You can click there, learn all about Devin. I mean, the short story is uh, Devin's been fly fishing for a heck of a long time. He's a competitive fly fisher. He's on Fly Fishing Team USA, one of our best anglers. Uh, he competes all around the world, in case you're not hearing that. If people want to reach out and get a hold of you, best way? Tacticalflyfisher.com. You can find our website uh, there, and at the bottom of it, there's an email, and I pretty much check most of those emails. So. Great website, great resource. Aside from the fact you can buy a lot of excellent stuff there, if you look in the blog page, Devin has a page just loaded with just tons of information. A lot of them link back to his YouTube channel. I'll put a link down, you know, specifically to Tactical Fly Fisher. Reach out to Devin there. It's just an absolute great resource. So I guess to finish this video, listen, we went through your four categories. We're talking about the notion of fly body design. Anything we left out you want to throw out? Mainly just think about it when you put on your fly. So one of the biggest aspects of success when nymphing is just getting your fly at the right level when you approach fish. If it's sinking too fast and it falls out of the sky in the, from the fish's viewpoint, it just doesn't look good. It doesn't look natural. A day where I realized that in full when I uh, was fishing with my friend Kurt. And you can read about that, that story in my book, Tactical Fly Fishing. But if it's falling out of the sky, it doesn't look natural. Also, if it's a foot above their head and they're not willing to come up for it, you're not going to catch fish there either. So sometimes you can make a change uh, in the weight of the fly that you're fishing, and that's what you need. But sometimes you need a smaller change. And just by changing the, having the same way to fly, but affecting what the body is made out of, you can get your flies at the right level and end up catching more fish. Said from the true expert right here. Devin, thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks, Tim. You're welcome. Thanks everyone for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. You can also email me at tcamisa at gmail.com. If you want to get a hold of Devin, tacticalflyfisher.com. Tons of information in this one, tons in the previous videos. And we may even have a future video coming after this one. you got to subscribe. We'll get you to that one. Hey, <laughs> thanks again. And thank you, everybody. We'll see you soon.